Good morning, everyone. I'm Judith Hank uh, with the EPA. It's a wonderful day to be on the Gowanus Canal, and I'm here to announce that EPA uh, has a final plan to clean up the Gowanus Canal. Let me give you a, a short synopsis of what the EPA cleanup plan will do. If you take a look at the canal, you will see, unfortunately, a, a rainbow sheen on top of the canal today, which is significant of some petroleum products on the canal. Thankfully, it didn't rain recently, so we're not smelling the canal today. Uh, but what this cleanup plan will do is require the removal of 600,000 cubic yards of contaminated sediment from the bottom of the canal. This plan today also reduces sewage overflows from combined sewer overflows by 58% to 74% so that the canal stays clean after the dredging. In some areas contaminated with liquid coal tar that bubbles up to the surface, the sediment will be stabilized by mixing it with cement or similar binding material. The Guanas Canal is only 1.8 miles long. It's only 100 feet wide, but it is one of the most contaminated urban waterways in the entire nation. We believe that this cleanup will take between 8 to 10 years. It will cost $506 million. Uh, the companies that will primarily be paying for the cleanup are parties we call potentially responsible parties. That's National Grid, the City of New York, four federal agencies, and 29 companies. And we look forward to working collaboratively with them to get this cleanup started. We also believe that this cleanup will create hundreds of new jobs. And we want as many of these jobs to be local jobs as possible. This um, contamination took about 100 years to create. Uh, we have a toxic legacy here of heavy metals such as lead and mercury, PCBs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and an array of toxins which we believe threaten people's health and the environment. Just to put this a little bit in context, at other Superfund sites where EPA does work all over the region, we typically measure toxics in parts per million, parts per billion, sometimes in parts per trillion. Here we measure the toxins in parts per hundred. For the Hudson River, for instance, where we do a lot of work getting PCBs out of the river, PCBs in the sediment we're dredging are at about 80 parts per million. In the Gowanus Canal, EPA is measuring toxic substances in coal tar in parts per hundred. I want to emphasize that we developed this cleanup plan in cooperation with the community. The Gowanus Canal Superfund site has one of the most engaged and active communities of any cleanup site in the nation. The proposed plan also included the possibility of building a disposal facility in Red Hook. Today I'm announcing that we will not do that. Instead. Uh, the EPA has decided to require disposal of the least contaminated sediment at a facility away from this area. It's certainly an option that we had to take a hard look at. We took a hard look and decided not to go in that direction. So most of the sediment will be sent outside of the area. The second big piece of this cleanup is keeping sewage from recontaminating the canal. And it's not just sewage that comes out of the CSOs, it's also toxins. Uh, the canal receives pollution from a sewer system that combines sewage, street runoff, and wastewater. When it rains, the combined sewer system often overflows, sending a wave of raw sewage and toxic materials into the canal. This overflow deposits a new layer of toxic material in the canal. This cleanup plan that EPA is announcing today will require that discharges from two of the major sewage overflow points in the upper canal be outfitted with retention tanks so that when it rains heavily, the tanks will hold the water so we don't have this rush of raw sewage and toxins going into the canal whenever it rains. And as you know, it rains a lot. The plan we're re announcing today will reduce sewage solid discharges by 50 H of 74%.
and this cleanup plan will end that cycle of contamination and recontamination. As you know, the canal has been heavily polluted since it was dug shortly after the Civil War. More than a hundred years of development and industrialization has put a toxic stamp on the Gowanus Canal. Now, we have a chance to put our stamp on the canal. Our parents, many who grew up in Brooklyn, like mine, have only known a polluted Gowanus Canal. Our children and our grandchildren will now only know a clean one. This is not a case of a one-time one environmental uh, disaster. This has been going on for over a century. The Gowanus Canal has been home to hundreds of businesses. And over that time, many of these businesses have used the Gowanus Canal as a dumping ground, transforming our canal into a polluted waterway. And many of these businesses are not even in existence anymore, while many others continue to pollute the canal. So no one business or no one catastrophic event is responsible for the state of affairs. And as the water quality deteriorated, the demand for a plan to clean up the canal only increased. I'm looking forward to uh, this canal being pristine at some point, at least enough that we don't get the smells anymore, we don't have the color that it is anymore, uh, and certainly that we have development on the canal that people can enjoy, appreciate, uh, and even some housing, possibly, uh, which is part of the plan for the future of this canal. In due time, the Gowanus Canal will be a safer and cleaner place for folks, all of us, and wildlife alike. Its remediation will one day turn the canal into an economic engine for our borough and an urban o oasis of, of relaxation for Brooklynites. A dream of the future, when we see families line up to take a boat ride, uh, in Brooklyn's very own Venice, and that's true, it's possible, you've got to think, it's true. Several local residents dreamed up the Gwandola a couple of years ago, and I say, why not? So first things first, the hard work is next to dredge and stabilize the canal, but with Judy and your great team here, EPA and officials like Nydia, at the helm and outstanding community leaders that are right here, I believe the best days of the Gowanus Canal are just upstream. <laughs> and any questions from reporters? Sir? Uh, how clean is it going to be? Is it going to be clean enough to fish, clean enough to swim? Um, no. Um, it'll be much cleaner than it is today. You'll be able to safely boat and be able to touch the water, but it's going to take decades to get this water body to the point where it would be safe to, to swim or eat fish. So no swimming anytime soon. Um, but this is the, the key first step to get us there now. Other questions? Um, your plan includes the retention tank for the final plan of the Bloomberg administration has said that it does not believe it does has to build these tanks. So how will the EGA ensure that these tanks are going to get built? The question is, um, the Bloomberg administration does not agree that retention tanks are necessary to control the CSO pollution. Um, we, th we think the tanks are essential, um, especially during wet weather events, heavy rains, and um, this is folded into the record of decision. Uh, so we hope to reach uh, an amicable agreement with the city. I think this is an opportunity for the city to turn the page, uh, to roll up their sleeves and work collaboratively, not only with EPA, but also the state and the other potential responsible parties to get this job done. The reason why we included this in this record of decision is because it doesn't make sense to dredge the contaminated sediment and then have recontamination. You want to add something? I, I just would like to. She's nice. She's really nice. <laughs> but let me remind the city that the EPA, under the law, the statute, has the power and authority to compel the city. It, it has been part of the record of decision. And, and maybe I'll just add, as a, as a city elected official, though on the legislative side of the House and not the executive side of the House, 
Um, this is an important moment of transition in the city as well. A lot of things are going to change at City Hall, and I hope we can rise to that opportunity because, as the Congresswoman made clear, the power exists, but it would be much better sure. if we, in the next administration, can work together to achieve a real good comprehensive agreement uh, that builds on the work that's done here, that includes those tanks, that makes sure we improve water quality, that's thoughtful as part of the city's long-term control plan for continued reductions in CSOs, uh, and moves forward in, you know, post-Sandy to invest in the infrastructure that we need. So. What about other responsible parties um, other than the City of New York? So the major potential responsible parties are National Grid, the City of New York, four federal agencies, and 29 different companies. And they're all listed on the EPA web page. And what typically happens with Superfund cleanups is we meet with all of the parties and we apportion liability. Um, sadly, we have done this many, many times. Uh, and we and they often meet themselves and figure out who's going to pay what. EPA's concern is to make sure we have enough money to thoroughly do this cleanup. And if there's not an agreement to do it, we have legal tools, as the Congresswoman mentioned, that would compel the various parties to come up with the money. We do not want uh, federal taxpayers footing the bill. Um, this is a key part of the Superfund law, the polluter pay principle, and um, we think we can get this done. Certainly the sooner that the parties cooperate with us, the quicker this is going to go. Uh, we, you know, eight to ten years is our estimate on the cleanup. If we get a higher level of cooperation from all of the parties, we can do it sooner.